Hate to see that from Jim Thorpe. All right, guys, we're here at Texas Motorplex in Ennis, Texas for the third race of the season for the Roof Tech Comp Eliminator Bonus Fund. Coming out of Bell Rose, Chase Williams took down Rick Brown in the final round. Chase and Rick are number one and number two in the points. Coming into this event, we have a full field of Comp Eliminator competitors on the property here this weekend. With this race being a double divisional, there are two opportunities, two full events here this weekend. So a big weekend in store for these guys to make up some ground on Rick and Chase at the top of the pack. Bring up Alan Wilson and Roger Brogdon. There's Roger, brand new, way cool looking wrap on that B Altered Planetary 2022 Camaro. His brother Paul, Travis Salter, Billy Holmes down there. The man behind Roof Tech. Personal thank you going out to Roger for sending some guys out and helping me out after the storms. loose of that thing and just rattles the tires right out there. Roger goes 720 with a five. Oh, it's just effort, you know. It always takes money, but you uh, uh, don't do you any good being able to, to 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 do this if you don't have the people dedicated to to getting the job done. And my my cousin Paul and and uh, my uh, other guy Travis. Uh, there's nothing that they won't do to, to get this car fast and get this car to the racetrack. You know, after we broke last week and uh, broke the top off the valve and bell rose, the guys got home, took the engine out, drove all the way to Odessa like they always do. Got it repaired, back in the car about four days later. What, it, it wasn't very long. It, it, it probably took them a five days all together. They run out there and get it fixed, get back, get the car back together. So it's just frustrating, but that's part of it. You know, if you're gonna try to run, you know, like we do a lot of races a year and uh, be really really competitive it's going to take a lot more effort than a lot, most people are willing to willing to you know willing to do liberty gears on board with jason grimma that's the b altered over in the right hand side that car powered by a 414 cubic inch ford small block got a clutch in it five speed liberty david triplett over in the left hand side the name of the game in comp eliminator is how low can you go furthest under the index going to be the number one qualifier a whole lot of different classes and category Miles an hour. So Jared Grigne, right hand side, running in D Supermod trim this weekend for Lupe Tortilla, another one of the OG bonus fund sponsors. Some of the best Mexican food you're ever going to eat if you're down in the Houston area. And for Don Thomas, for Panhandle Performance Engines, was the Comp Cash Clash winner at the U.S. Nationals last year. Jared Grigne, trip, sip, perfect, letting the clutch out in the super mod car. 696 at 178 miles an hour. Don Thomas, 63 under with a one. And for Cali, the 258 cubic inch six cylinder Chevrolet powered machine. Clint and Cali are operators of I-70 and Harlan Towing based out of Denver, Colorado. This is their third year. Cali turns it red, means absolutely nothing in qualifying. Steve is double O nine on the Christmas tree. How about a 765, 172 miles an hour for Cali. 62 under with a six, that's gonna put her number one. For me, it doesn't always really matter where I qualify. I don't play the ladder game. It's not the easiest for me. I'm still new to this, so I'm still trying to get used to that kind of stuff, but I just, I don't really see a point in trying to play the ladder game all the time. Obviously, it's a little bit more crucial for us because we don't always want to, we always want to end up on the same side of the ladder, the three of us do, so that we're not having to race each other first round, but that's pretty much it. Um, it was definitely really cool. A lot of people complimented me about it and congratulated me. That was cool, but yeah. That's Clint behind the wheel of Harry Clax, A Econo Dragster. There's a 499 cubic inch Ford Pro Stock power plant sitting behind his head. The chassis on that machine is fully custom. One of the wildest dragsters you will see anywhere in the country. I would highly recommend taking an up-close look at this car. It was actually an engine design that was thought up and built by Jim Cunningham before he passed away. Glenn Treadwell over the left-hand side for Treadwell Farms. Hemp and CBD products. 
That's what they produce, the M-Altered Automatic 306 cubic inch inline six Ford power plant. You saw Cali Neff go number one, 62 under with a six. Got a pair of cars right here that put that number one spot in jeopardy. Six sixty four one ninety three for Clint. That's fifty seven under. He goes to the three spot. Brian Wegner and that wicked cool a nostalgia dragster over on the right hand side. One of our newest sponsors in the bonus fund, Tasco Auto Color and PPG. Ashton Hudson over in the left lane. The H altered automatic two hundred and ninety eight cubic inch Ford small block. Red light start for Wegner means absolutely nothing in qualifying. Ryan Wagner with a great lap goes 689, 188, 62 under the index. We're still trying to figure this combination out. Uh, just trying to figure out the tune up and the converter, and obviously uh, trying to get into a routine on the starting line. So trying to figure out the blinder situation. Well, I mean, we're, we're trying to not anticipate that bottom bulb. So we're either blocking the opponent's uh, tree or blocking, you know, the top or middle bulb on our side, trying to be consistent on that bottom bulb. So definitely different than what I, you know, in the past that always run super comp or bracket race and you're reacting off the top bulb. Well, now you're trying to react off that bottom. So it's definitely a learning curve for me. So just trying to, trying to get a rhythm there, so. Les, it's great to be back. Um, in Houston last March, um, lost the car in what we believe might have been some water on the racetrack, ended up backing into the wall, uh, ended up having to work on the right rear corner of the car and the front end. Uh, it was in the uh, chassis shop for about six months and the paint shop for about four months. And then it's taken us about two months to put everything back together. But uh, this weekend is our first outing and since then. So um, kind of struggling to find our way, but it feels good to be back. There were some issues in the front of the car, the way the struts had been mounted previously that we didn't like, and so this was a great opportunity to address that. Um, hadn't found what we're looking for there yet. Um, obviously, just on this run here, end up uh, tearing up a ring and pinion, so uh, rain short an event, and now we're down a couple of uh, qualifying attempts, so um, kind of guessing at where we need to be set up wise, but uh, like you said, it's not that much different of a car than it was. Hopefully, we can get there. Jim goes 736. That's 50 under with a three. Keith Mahi. There was a little lazy off the starting line. 117 short time, goes to a 964. He's going to stay down at the bottom of the field. Don Thomas and Taylor Chemiskey will be your next pair. Yeah, the list of ways to lose is always longer than how you can win by a long shot, especially in this pit area. But yeah, we had uh, a minor malfunction with uh, the dash not being fully zoosed in, and it shot back at me when I let the clutch out and conveniently jammed itself in the shifter rod. So pulling back on second was good, pushing forward into third, not so good. So um, had the unfortunate great view of the back of Chase Williams car and he gets me once again but uh, we'll line up again this season I don't think he wants that I mean you got the best guys in the country here I mean I think we're representing you know four or five out of the seven divisions here with guys coming in um, full field 32 cars um, even if you qualify 16 or 15 you're gonna get a really fast car so pressure's on um, the weather is helping some of the fast cars not to be able to go 70 something under but there's still guys a lot of guys probably half the field that can be in that 55 to 60 under range so pressure's definitely on thomas red by seven thousand 824 153 taylor chemiskey he's gonna move up Well, I just wanted to be different, just try to bring the old school back and uh, just something that's nobody has and nobody's done in a long time. I think it'd just be pretty cool and it's got a lot of attention. What have you had to do to this car to, to get it to be competitive? Well, it's uh, 
engine work, transmission gear ratios, figuring out the clutch because I've never run a clutch car before. So it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty high tech when you get into a lot of gear ratios and a lot of clutch setups. And it's uh, it's a lot of work to try to figure out on your own. But uh, the Comp family in Division Four has been really helpful with trying to get me close as possible uh, with the setup and. It's showing potential. It's still a lot to learn, you know, and launch RPMs affects everything. So it's just learning curve, really. So Vega out here, not too many Vegas have run Comp Eliminator at any point in recent memory. This is actually that Jason's dad had when Jason was eight years old. Travis makes a move towards the center line. He stays with it. Car starts to dance around out there. Travis shoves in the clutch. 871, 156 for Achoa. No go for him. He'll stay with his earlier 863. Travis goes to a 32 it doesn't matter I mean there's so many good cars here good drivers it's gonna be a it's gonna be a fight no matter what but I'm glad we're it's it's it makes you feel better if you're running good anyway just got to pick your pick your spots um, but I think eventually you're gonna have to make the decision to take some to win rounds so hopefully if it just keep getting hotter that'd be fine with me killed about another 400 to be good <laughs> Car under him. So the machine campaigned by Jeff Taylor last year as they roll into the beams. Jim's going to get about a quarter of a second head start. Jim turns it red. Car makes a move towards the center line. Stays with it till about half track. They both shut it down, and Don Thomas is going to coast to an easy win. 769, 120 miles an hour. Joe Mazaris and Clint Neff. Joe, the small block Mopar powered B Econo Dragster left side. He's going to move first by about a quarter of a second in eliminations for competition eliminator. The first one of the finish line is going to win the race, regardless of anything else. Well, So Clint Neff going to get the win here. Oh, wow. Clint was a tenth behind at the tree. Goes 664, 202.45. Taylor for Chermisky performance on the right-hand side. Lone Star Gasket, CIP1, Scott Seed, NC Machine, and Watson Concrete, C Super Modified. Qualified in the number 10 spot, Dean Carter over on the left-hand side for Quality Floors out of Peoria, Arizona. Almost one and three-quarter second head start to Taylor Chermisky. His index is 881. Dean Carter, his index is 709. Chemiski was double 008 on this end, gets down there and shoves the clutch in, goes 841 at only 139 miles an hour. Travis, the South Dakota base, C Super Modified over on the left side. Jared Grenier, the Lab Deville, Louisiana based Lupe Tortilla Chevy Cobalt. 298 cubic inch small blocks in underneath the hood scoop of Jared's machine. He's going to get two tenths of a second head start. small block except for two of them. Jared Grenier goes 847. That's 54 under, so he's going to take a four-hun hit into the next round. Brings up David Triplett and Melissa Murphy. Melissa for buyherplants.com. Mail order subscription flower and plant delivery service. David Triplett over on the left side. Running for Treadwell Farms, a very, very successful bracket racer. Prider stepping into this G Econo car. 1.1 seconds. The head start going to go to triplet. Melissa 
Sosa is a tenth behind at the tree, hugging the right side of the groove. And this is going to be David Triplett turning on the wind light. 50 under with a one. It's Ashton Hudson and Keith Mahi. In comp, the ladder is so important. So you want to be in the lower half of the top half of the ladder. So looking at the ladder today, you can see there's probably about five cars that were gunning for that same position. And sometimes it can literally come down to thousands between running number one in the first round or running number 32 in the first round. Ashton Hudson moves on 880. So here comes Jeff Taylor, one of the most successful sportsman racers in NHRA history. Going to be taking on Adam Hickey. Winner of this pair will get Clinton Neff in the next round. Hickey qualified 14th. Taylor had problems in qualifying, found himself towards the bottom of the sheet. The double B altered on the left side. Big advantage at the tree to Adam Hickey. And that is not a full pull for either one. Adam Hickey's going to take the SNH Automotive Dragster into the next round with an unblemished index. Callie Neff left side, Chase Williams right. Chase the reigning Complimentator Bonus Fund champion, also a JEGS All-Stars competitor. Won the JEGS All-Stars and won the U.S. Nationals last year. Pretty much a dream season, did everything except win the World Championship. Callie over in the left lane, the inline six-cylinder power, J Dragster Automatic for I-70 and Harlan Towing out of Colorado. She's gonna get almost a full second head start. Two very, very tough Complimentator competitors out there on the racetrack. About 300 advantage at the Christmas tree to Chase Williams, and it's going to be Chase Williams turning on the wind light. 50 under with a zero. Three ten thousandths of a second margin of victory in that last pair for Chase Williams. Your current points leader, Jason Grimma and Alan Wilson for BuyerPlants.com, the GTO, big honking blown Hemi, double A altered on methanol, owned by Andy Moak. For Jason Grimma, the B altered right hand side. Former Australian Pro Stock champ. This is actually the same trim that they run in Australian Pro Stock. It's a small block, about 400 cubic inches, with a five-speed Liberty behind it. Alan Wilson all over the place. Hold on, big boy. And Alan Wilson went bowling for dollars out there, but that car was all over the racetrack. Made a move towards the center line, tried to gather it back in. And Alan Wilson with a great job of driving to keep that thing from hitting anything else. His opponent or the retaining wall, Jason Grimma, 7-10-168, was off the throttle before the finish line. So your final pair, the man behind the Comp Eliminator bonus fund, Roger Brogdon, over on the right-hand side, the B-altered planetary, D-stroked 445 cubic inch pro stock power plant, and Royce Freeman over in the left lane, the B-altered automatic for Elite Motorsports, having problems. Not sure if he's lost fire or just doesn't have reverse. Elite Motorsports coming on board to sponsor the Comp Eliminator Bonus Fund. And it looks like Royce is going to shut it off, so Roger Brogdon's going to have a solo into the next round. Little wiggle down low for Roger. Runs it down to the eighth mile, shuts it off. Goes to an 8.07 and a win light. That's going to do it for Comp Eliminator round number one. Ashton Hudson, right-hand side. And sponsors of the Roof Tech Comp Eliminator Bonus Fund. Double O Green Hand Cleaner. Doctor formulated product available on Amazon. Ashton, an ER doctor during the week. The H Altered Automatic. 2000 Ford Escort. Small block Ford underneath the hood. Rick Brown for Don Redditch and John Stock. B-Truck Automatic. Both these guys come in. No CIC penalties. First round of eliminations. So first pair of Roof Tech Comp Eliminator rolling in. second between them on the tree. It's going to be a Rick Brown. 54 under for the win. So Rick is going to take a hit of four going into the next round. It's David Triplett. 
wildly successful bracket racer, two-time million dollar race winner for Treadwell Farms, producer of hemp and CBD products out of Florida, Chase Williams, the reigning Comp Eliminator Bonus Fund champion, Jegs All-Stars champ, U.S. Nationals winner last year. Over the right side, David Triplett, double O four on this end of the racetrack. Chase, Chase has 400 to make up and he is not gonna get it done. David gets down there, taking a stride by almost a 10th, goes 790 at 150 miles an hour, and he's gonna take a hit of nine going into the next round. Sheesh, that's almost personal index territory. You go 61 under in eliminations or better, your personal index gets schwacked. Jason Grimmick, Greg Campaign. Campaign, the retired machinist out of the Division Three area, the Sea Dragster Automatic over on the right side. Jason Grimmick, the B altered, 414 cubic inch, small block, five-speed Liberty and a clutch. 761 the index, five hundredths of a second head start going to the door car. Liberty Gears and Jason Grimma. Liberty's on board as a Roof Tech Comp Bonus Fund sponsor this season. Neither one of them in a hurry to leave the starting line. Grimma leaves first. He's 125 on the tree, goes 703, 57 under with a 9, 189 miles an hour. Don Thomas and Taylor Chemiski. Thomas for Panhandle Performance Engines. Taylor Chemiski wants to give a shout out to Kobe, Barry, and the boys from Scott Seed Company in the house here this weekend. Well, Chemiski Performance, CIP1 and a Lone Star Gasket. The C Super Mod. He's over on the right side. He's going to move first by 1.2 seconds. Don Thomas, the small block powered C Dragster Automatic out of Amarillo. Neither one taking any index. Coming into round number two. on to the next round. Adam Hickey and Clint Neff. Clint on the right-hand side, that wild A. Econo dragster for Harry Clack. 499 cubic inch Ford Pro Stock power plant with a single four barrel sitting on top of it. And Adam Hickey over in the left lane. 2022 Comp Eliminator Bonus Fund champion. Adam for SNH Automotive, a truck, and truck service and repair shop out of South Louisiana. Clint Neff comes in, taking a hit of seven hun in the first round. Hickey's clean. 400 advantage, Clint Neff. Does he have enough horsepower? No. Adam Hickey, 682, 193, 54 under with a sixth. Hickey's gonna move on. He's gonna take a hit of four. Glenn Treadwell for Treadwell Farms. The M altered automatic, inline six cylinder, 306 cubic inch Ford power plant. And Jared Grigne for Lupe Tortilla, Stan and Sheila Holt. Great Mexican food restaurants down in the Houston area. Another one of our great sponsors for the Roof Tech Comp Eliminator Bonus Fund. Winner of this pair is going to get David Triplett in the quarterfinal round. One pair already set: Taylor Chemiski and Adam Hickey. Jarrett hiking the front end up, makes a little move towards the wall. He's got about 400. Does Treadwell have enough horsepower? And will he use it? Oh, yes, he will. He's going to take a tenth of CIC going into the next round. He goes 777, 167. That's 60 under with a 7. So the two Treadwell Farms entries going to face off in the next round. Treadwell knocked a tenth off of his index. David Triplett knocked nine off of his. Chris Dodd, Roger Brogdon, the B altered planetary. Over in the left lane, your number one qualifier. He's gonna spot four hundredths of a second to Chris Dodd, the wedge headed 315 cubic inch small block Chevy powered C Econo dragster. Neither one's taken a hit thus far. So whoever manages to turn on the wind light can do so without knocking anything off their number. They will have an advantage on paper at least going into the quarters. advantage to Roger on the tree. He's getting way over by the center line down there at the top end. It does not appear that Roger crossed the center line before he crossed the finish line. Seven at Thal, the margin of victory down there. Scott Linder was supposed to be alongside of Kayla Mazaris. Kayla not able to make the call. 
So Scott Linder in that bad, fast A altered with a basically a 700 cubic inch rear Morrison power plant underneath the hood scoop. Gonna solo his way into round three. Scott runs it down about 800 feet, clicks it off. Scott Linder gonna take on Rick Brown, who's knocked four hun off of his index. Um, he beat me at the last race in uh, Louisiana, so uh, I kind of owed him, and uh, I gave him a good run this time. Now, your experience with going you know, seven round races, eight round races, nine round races, I'm sure. 10, 11. 10, 11, yeah. <laughs> Real long races, yes. physically tough. You know, we got hot and humid, uh, hot and humid conditions. Eight tricks to keeping yourself focused in that car? Um, mostly stay hydrated. Stay hydrated is the most important thing, I think. Um, and uh, it basically it applies the same thing in bracket racing. You know, we're out here in the sun all day long racing too. So that part's the same for me. This is definitely a different kind of racing, though. So we're used up, and uh, we're probably going to let Dave go on just because he's got more left. Um, and then just say, you know, this probably the best field so far, you know, being a uh, uh, veteran here. Oh, tough, man. There ain't easy run here. You know, it's all tough and that's what we like about it. You know, that's what we came here for is the competition and a good time. And um, we're getting both. So David Treblet was supposed to be alongside of Glenn Treadwell. The two Treadwell's farms entries are gonna face off. Glenn not able to make the call. So Triplett's going to roll up, take the beams, and he will have a date in the semifinals. Taylor Chemisky left, Adam Hickey over in the right. And Adam Hickey over on the right side, SNH Automotive, repair shop out of South Louisiana, came on board after winning the championship a couple years ago. Coming into this round, Chemisky, CIP1, Lone Star Gasket, Scott Seed Company, NC Machine and Watson Concrete, Wells Chemisky Performance, clean index, no CIC penalties yet, Adam Hickey, knocked four hunt off in the last round. So Taylor gonna move first by about a full Christmas tree. 1.48 seconds, the difference in index. Adam Hickey is 009, and Adam Hickey's gonna move on. Taylor goes 826 at 159 and was 59 on the tree. That's not bad, but when the other guy is 009, that is not enough to get the job done. And Adam Hickey's gonna move on to the semifinal round. Scott Linder and Rick Brown. Winner will get Adam Hickey in the semifinals here in race number one. Brown took a hit of four in the last round, the B-Truck automatic. He's gonna move first by over a full Christmas tree, 1.62 seconds the difference. The 700 cubic inch Grand Am gonna try to chase him down. Advantage on the tree to Rick Brown by 500. Linder's closing fast. Winline gonna go to Brown. Linder goes 658, 212. He was closing very, very quickly, about 50 miles an hour in difference, 1,320 feet later. But Rick Brown goes to the semis with an 823, 163, and he is now taking eight. Had to break out the bad voice a little bit right there. Jason Grimma, Roger Brogdon. Jason brings a CIC total of seven hun into this quarterfinal matchup. Roger took two in the last round. Be altered planetary for Roger Brogdon. Jason Grimma, 400 plus cubic inch small block with a clutch in it. Baby, Roger Brognan is perfect. He's driving over to the center line again. He gathers it back in. Roger, trip zip, 40 under. And he is going to the semis. It was over with. 
Jason Grimma was 99, letting the clutch out, 7-12-166. Brogdon with a CIC total of two, triplet with nine off of his index, and Adam Hickey and Rick Brown. Hickey bringing a CIC total of four, Brown with eight into the semifinal round. Fortunately, it went you know, on the right side of the, of the color. <laughs> I, well, of course, you never go up there trying to do that. I wanted to be, you know, 20 to 30, but I, I think I might have rolled in a little deep, so I got it under control. Who you got in that shot? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it don't matter. I just, wish, I just watch a round at a time and keep up with how much index is, what the index should be. That's all I did. You got to outrun them all eventually, so what order does it matter? <laughs> We've, uh, we were a little heavy uh, earlier on. We are light now and uh, running on the edge, so there's not a whole lot there we can do, but uh, we're working on jetting and timing now and, uh, and some other things inside the engine. So uh, that's a, we, we don't have much more left. Uh, this heat and humidity is not only bad on them, the cars, and the truck, but me, myself, and I. He's always tough. He's, he's got a good life the last round, and uh, there's nothing better than him. They're very, very, very good people. And I have nothing bad to say, and it'll just be a good race. We're down more than he is, so uh, we're going to have to try to find something here before the next round. Adam Hickey with another double O light. Double O seven win light, Adam Hickey. 683-192. Rick Brown goes 823-163. Adam Hickey is 49 under. Does not take any additional index penalties. There's Roger, the B-altered planetary. 445 cubic inch big block Chevrolet. And here comes David for Treadwell Farms. Again, one of our great sponsors in the Roof Tech Complimentator Bonus Fund. Producing some great hemp and CBD products out of their farm down in Florida. Go see their, go by their pit area. Chat them up about that. Two CIC coming into this round. Triplet carrying nine. A little over half a second head start. We're gonna go to the G Econo Dragster and then Roger in the Roof Tech machine gonna try to track them down 1,320 feet later. Fighting for a berth in the final round against Adam Hickey. David Triplett, double O six in the dragster finish line is going to be Roger Brockton. Goes 728-178. That's 56 under. So he's going to carry eight CIC into the final round. He's running really good this weekend. Fortunately, so are we, so it ought to be a good final. Uh, if I can get off the starting line, I should I should win. You know, we don't race these things on paper, so let's just wait and see what happens. It's going to be a good race. Uh, we're going to go up there, cut a light, give him all he's got. See how far he wants. See how far he wants to go. And uh, you have a little advantage on index. No, no, we're we're used pretty much. We we four down, which is about all we're gonna go. Uh, I know he's got a little bit left. Eliminator. Roger Brogdon and Adam Hickey. There's Roger. 
the man behind Roof Tech. Primary sponsor of the Roof Tech Comp Eliminator Bonus Fund, the B Altered Planetary. And there's Adam Hickey for SNH Automotive. Another one of our great sponsors here in the Roof Tech Comp Bonus Fund. Roger is outside of the top 16 to get into the comp cash clash to be contested at Indianapolis. Chase Williams, Rick Brown, and Jeff Taylor came into this event as the top three. And regardless of anything else, these two are going to be making some big moves. So Roger Brogdon being waved up right side. Comes in carrying eight hunting CIC. Hickey's been dinged for four. Hickey's in, Roger's in. They're both green. Slight advantage by about a Honda Roger, and it looks like Hickey's already there, and Adam Hickey is gonna get the win. Adam Hickey goes 688 at 186. Roger, 17 on the tree. Car was down about three hun. At 60 foot, 109 the short time, 747, 172. Not enough to get it done. Adam Hickey, your winner in Roof Tech Comp Eliminator, race number one here at the Motorplex. It's all about being consistent, being able to do the same thing every run. And the car is running good. We pretty keep it pretty close on the tree, and we're there for the taking if they're going to give it away. Well, yeah, and then talk about the run. You you actually made it around the made it around Roger. We got a ride on Roger pretty quick. I figured something was going on, but I just stayed in a little longer than normal just because I knew we weren't going to hit the index. So uh, it was a good race for us. <laughs> and then talking about the championship, how 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 does this season compare to 2022 so far? Uh, they've all been very competitive as far as 2022. It was we were so far behind the eight ball in the beginning because we. The first two or three races, we had some a lot of mishaps, uh, and it was just if it's meant to be, it'll be. So, as soon as anybody's you know jumps out of the junior, they're ready to go compete uh, at the highest levels. Um, I've been racing since I was eight. So I've been racing 20 years now, so it's kind of pretty crazy to, to say that. But, you know, you as soon as you're ready to jump in a big car, you've already had, I don't know, over 10 years of experience. So, and it's all, it's all the same, um, you know, as far as all the fundamentals of it. Um, you know, there's a few things you got to learn once you get to big cars, but all the racing aspect is the same. So finish line driving and everything. Oh, it's been a it has been a mad thrash. We got the car. I picked it up on uh, 11:30 Monday night. After that, we dropped in Dad's motor in this thing, and was the first time putting it in this car. So things are different, you know, it's different locations for uh, for sensors and whatnot, and uh, just trying to get everything to fit this car. I ran over to Rare Morrison on Tuesday morning, had new oil, fuel, water lines made up. And then after that, it was a mad thrash to get everything ready to go down a racetrack, which we had some help from Mother Nature on uh, Thursday. And we were able to finish it up, you know, Thursday night, Friday morning, and make it up for Q1, so. As Jeff Taylor and Chris Dodd, both of them, quite a bit of success in the Lucas Oil ranks. One of them has over 100 Wallies to his credit, though. And that's going to be Jeff Taylor, left-hand side. For Nickens and Whiteley Motorsports, j and Services, bonus fund sponsor over there, Jim and Annie. There's a factory stock showdown power plant sitting between the frame rails of this Dodge Stratus. And Chris Dodd, the C Econo Dragster, wedge-headed small block Chevy, with the back-to-back -back Super Comp World Champ. This is Dad Sean, been doing this a long time, trying to see Chris have some success in this category as well. Taylor's car kicks left. As soon as he leaves the starting line, he's going to click it off and coast to the top end, 737. For Chris Dodd, that's 54 under. 
So Brooke Heckle over the right side, her dad Shane making an adjustment to the wheelie bars, running for Structural Steel Covers of Texas, Shane's business down in the Houston area. Another one of our bonus sponsors, as well as Callie Neff, her and her dad Clint for I-70 and Harlan towing out of the Denver area. Lender. I'm going to shut up and let you guys listen to Scott bang through the gears. This monstrous big block Chevy powered Grand Am. And what a sweet sound it is. 657, 211 miles an hour, 58 under. Clinton F, the final car in the first round of qualifying, and if Clint wants to get on the qualifying sheet, he's got to go quicker than roughly 60 seconds. Last night was the worst part because Kayla had a, a rocker stand pull out of the head on the other motor, and of course she won the first round, but by the time we got done at 11 o'clock, it was, we could have changed motors last night or at least started so she could make second round, but then the bugs, there was like this infestation of, I don't even know what they were, but there had to have been 10,000 10, of them in our pit area, and I'm not kidding. I had to use the blower just to blow them off the car before I loaded it in the trailer, because it, it was like solid. You couldn't even see the top of the car. They were all over the place. This is a bad, fast, a econo car. Clint goes 661, 60 under the index with a one, and he goes to the number two spot. You know, I was warned, you know, be careful that the tree's really bright. It's it's hard, it's harder at night, you know, be on be on your game, be on your tree and um, so that was going through my head. Uh, I didn't even think about, you know, making sure that the car was in the right gear or in reverse. So after my burnout, I go to put it in reverse, and, it, and I was thinking to myself, you know, I can't, I can't get my head down. I can't see. I don't know. It's dark. It's dark as heck out here. Um, I was like, well, let's just hit the trans brake button and see if it goes in reverse, and it did not. So I figured I'd go one more click back, and then um, found the reverse, uh, and then just getting into first and getting up to um, the staging, getting up to stage, um, I was a little nervous that maybe I wasn't in first and hitting my trans brake button, button and letting go and just kind of like, hey, well, let's see how this goes. <laughs> it worked out, the trans brake, it break hell, I was in first, but you know, that, that was definitely something that, that I will think about next time that it's dark and make sure I'm more acquainted with the car. I, I think it's a rush. I mean, I think running at night is, is pretty cool. If I can, if I can figure out some of these, you know, newbie type of um, issues, you know, the how to work the tree at night, how to um, make sure I'm in the right right gear at night. It feels like it's just you in a dark alley racing as fast as you can. Not a lot of lights on the side. There's no headlights. Um, so it, it's it's kind of eerie, but really cool. It's Melissa Murphy for FirePlants.com, mail order plant subscription service. Both cars kind of make a little jog to the left off the starting line. 826, 55 under with a nine, Rick Brown. For Nickens and Wiley Racing at a Grand Junction in Colorado, a former alcohol dragster standout. Wiley currently 20th in the field, Rogers in the number 13 position. Clint F, number one, 60 under with a one. Jim Wiley coming on board with j &A Services this year as a sponsor. Yeah, we got out there and it, it drove towards 
the center line. I tried to bring it back a little bit, and it sashayed way towards the center line. I, of course, let out of it, but we took out a couple cones. But um, yeah, well, I think the groove's pretty pretty narrow here, so we'll see. We we worked on the car a little bit, and we'll see what happens today. to you by Rooftech and the Rooftech Comp Eliminator bonus fund. First pair is going to be Brooke Heckle over on the right side. Brooke had a driveline issue yesterday evening. She's your number 16 qualifier. One of the great sponsors of the Comp Eliminator bonus fund brought to you by Rooftech and Ray Goodman left side, the A. Econo Walter. Single four barrel carburetor sitting on top of a 309 cubic inch Chevrolet small block. late and drifting towards the center line. Hold on to it, Ray. Brooke goes 7-11. Front end normally hiked up in the air on the truck. Jim Wiley rolls in in the Cobalt. Advantage on the tree by about three on going to Rick Brown. Wiley closing in. Does he have enough racetrack? He does not. And Rick Brown Goes 53 under with a six. He's going to take a hit of three going into the next round. Travis Gusso, that is a C super modified. Keith's car started out as a bunch of tubing and fiberglass. The F altered, creeping back up on this car. First weekend back in competition. Travis Gusso, sound like the car kind of stumbled out there. Keith Maul, he's going to go 8, 25, 35 under, 145. Brings up David Triplett and Steve Pascal. Triplett, the GE Econo dragster owned by the Treadwell family. Very successful bracket racer, now driving for Treadwell Farms. More than happy to talk to you about it. Steve Pascal, the wedge-headed C Econo dragster, small block Chevy, right-hand side out of Kansas. 28 qualifier, taking on number 12. Big advantage by about eight run to Triplett. And he is just gonna pull away. Oh! David Triplett way sideways down there in the shutdown area. Great job of driving by David Triplett. He crossed the finish line. Car made a right-hand turn. Able to gather it in. Car was going dead straight. Looks like David may have just got on the brakes a little bit too hard in the shutdown area. 
Brings up Melissa Murphy and Scott Linder. Melissa for BuyHerPlants.com. And Scott Linder, 698 cubic inch rare Morrison power plant underneath the hood scoop of the Grand Dam. He's down from Iowa. That is an A altered. I think it's a great deal what Roger's done for comp. I mean, obviously, look, we got a full field today, and uh, yeah, it's and it's a good fast field, and it's going to be a good deal. It's great for just to get people involved. Everybody's talking about it, so obviously it's going in the right direction. It's a handful usually, even no matter what. Um, you just got to back it off, I guess, and and uh, do the best. Scott Lander rattles the tires a little bit, short shifts the car, and he is already out front with the shoots out. 18 reaction time for Scott Lander. 670, 171, Melissa runs it through. 697, 194, Lander goes to round two clean. Ashton Hudson, who got in on his final shot. Ashton for Double O Green Hand Cleaner, Taylor for Chemiskey Performance, and the guys from Scott Seed Company. Four tenths head start going to the escort. Ashton Hudson left side. Big advantage at the tree. Taylor Chemiskey. Wop, wop, wop. Taylor's going to get the win. 842, 137. It's Kevin Carter and Adam Hickey. A couple of dragsters coming up next. Kevin for quality floors out of Phoenix, Arizona. Left side, and Adam Hickey, multi-time national event winner over on the right. And Adam turns it five thou red. Kevin Carter's gonna move on. Greg Campaign, Clint Neff. Clint for I-70 and Harlan Towing, him and Cali. The A.E. Cono dragster for Harry Clack. Wicked, wicked looking machine, a 499 cubic inch Ford Pro Stock engine with a four barrel on top of it. And Greg Campaign, the retired machinist out of Indiana. C Dragster Automatic, Greg getting three and a half tenths head start. Slide advantage at the tree to Campaign. Neff closing in, he goes 662, 59 under with a five. Brings up Don Thomas and Brian Wagner. Brian has had that A nostalgia car down in the six second range this weekend. And Don Thomas, the 327 small black Chevy for Panhandle Performance Engines. C Dragster, automatic out of Amarillo, Texas. He's gonna move first by eight hunt. And it's gonna be Don Thomas. Brian Wagner turns it red by six hunt. Chase Williams, left side, B Dragster automatic. 733 is the index. Roger moving first by a little over half a second in the B altered planetary. Roger rattles the tires a little bit down low. Chase Williams is dead late. 202 reaction time. Chase Williams not real sure what happened out there. Roger's 42, 733, 172. Showed up at no problem, and uh, it just kept throwing the blower belt off. Couldn't figure out why, so we went back and, and uh, after that race and redone the whole pulley system. And we come here, and now that blower belt's staying on, and the back one keeps breaking. So uh, six runs in a row, and it didn't get down. So uh, before the last qualifying run yesterday, we put a new blower on it, and um, it went down the track. So. Not real fast, but uh, to be so far behind, we haven't had a chance to do anything since we got here on Wednesday, as far as tuning goes. So uh, at least it went down the racetrack. So we're pretty excited about that because uh, it, it's just, it's been tough. Advantage at the tree to Cali. Does Jeff have enough room? No. Cali goes 60 under the index. Whatever your base index is for your class, if you go 61 under or better, you're going to get a personal index adjustment. So if Cali takes any more this weekend, her personal is going to get hit. Jason Ochoa. The wicked cool Vega turns it red, and Jason Grandma rattles the tires at the hit.
Jason Ochoa dropped the clutch in the Vega about a tenth too quick. Royce, the B altered automatic, basically just took one of the pro stock cars, added some pounds to it, and an automatic transmission in place of the Liberty. Patterson Elite Racing, Seth Wadley Auto Group. K altered automatic for K Lake, 250 cubic inch inline Ford. Six tenths the head start, going to the Bantam. And away they go. Royce closing in, getting close to the center line out there, and it's going to be Kayla Mazaris. 760, 154, oh baby, nine ten thousandths of a second margin of victory at the finish line. And Kayla Mazaris moves on. I was definitely watching him in our mirrors. You know, I was looking at the weather and figured we were going to be on a pretty decent run, pending we were going to be able to make it down the track. But I saw him coming and coming. You know, a 20 mile split isn't terrible. You know, based on my years in stock and super stock, I have that experience of being chased more often than not. Um, but he was, he was coming, but he wasn't gaining on me. So I was, you know, I told myself it's it's time to start scrubbing a little bit. And I scrubbed a little too much. I did a good, uh, a bad job of, of giving it back. But you know, if the little numbers can fall your way sometimes, that's all you need. But it, it was a great race between Roy. You know, I was 31, he was 33. Uh, I think we were both 53 under. So at the end of the day, it just came down to those little numbers. That run there, I was approaching this stripe. I couldn't hear my guy, so I just touched the brakes. This car's got carbon fiber brakes, and they obviously stopped. And uh, next thing I know, I'm in for a pretty good ride. Um, did a little bit of steering wheel maneuvers and got lucky. Kept her shiny side up. It was all just instinct. There was no thinking about it. I just did, my body just kind of took over. I really didn't have time to think. Roof tech comp eliminator coming up next, Kevin Carter. Quality floors out of Peoria, Arizona. Left hand side, the A Dragster Automatic. And for Rick Brown out of Weatherford, Texas, just down the road from here, the B Truck Automatic. Top three in points coming into this weekend. Brown with a hit of 300 on his first lap. Index dropped down to 879. He's going to move first by 1.7 seconds. And Carter going to have to try to chase him down. He's got 1,320 feet to do it. Off a deep, oh, the, here's a body panel came off of Kevin Carter's dragster on the last run. But Rick Brown was double 06 at the starting line. Don Thomas and Chris Dodd. Dodd, the wedge headed small block C Econo car, right side. Matt Sean had a lot of success running comp over the years. Dodd trying to follow in his footsteps. He's already a wildly successful super comp competitor. Don Thomas, panhandle performance engines. 327 small blocks sitting behind his head. C Dragster automatic to trim. No CIC penalties for either of these guys coming into this round. Green lights for both. Don grabs him a hundred and a half on this end, but it's not going to be enough as Don Thomas goes 704. 183, 55 under the index with a three for the win. A pair of clutch cars, Grimma for Liberty Gears, coming on board as a Comp Eliminator Bonus Fund sponsor. Originally from Australia, multi-time champion in the land down under, and Scott Linder, the A altered, rare Morrison powered Grand Am. And Scott Linder lets the clutch out, and the car makes a left-hand turn just past the 60-foot clocks. And Jason Grimmett got the shoots out well before the finish line. Taylor Chemisky for Chemisky Performance. Glenn Treadwell, Treadwell Farms, hemp and CBD products coming out of their farm down in Florida. And Chemisky Performance, you would like Lone Star Gasket CIP1, Scott Seed Company on board with them as well. So the M altered automatic of Glenn Treadwell sitting pre-stage. The C Supermod, small block, 2008 Cobalt with a clutch in it for Taylor coming in. Slight advantage out of the gate for Treadwell. Taylor Chemisky goes 8.20 with a 2 for the win. Treadwell goes 7.81-166. Brooke Heckle, Triple H Structural Steel Covers of Texas. The D Supermod for Jared Grenier. Bring the RPMs up, roll into the beams. 
Jared drifts left when he lets the clutch out. Brooke grabs eight, hun, on this end. She is closing in, and it's going to be Brooke Heckle. 52 under with a 7, 707, 185 miles an hour. Jared Grigny, 843, 160. It's David Triplett and Callie Neff come up. Callie's already taken a hit of 10. If she takes any more, she's going to get a personal hit. Jay Dragster automatic in the left hand side for I 70 and Harlan towing. David Triplett running for Treadwell Farms. David went to get on the brakes in the shutdown area on his last pass, and the car got way out of shape. Did a great job of driving to keep that thing right side up. Callie turns the tire a little bit on the starting line. David's got six on. Does she have the power to get there? No. 792, David Triplett at 154. Callie goes 793 at 142. Roger Brogdon and Keith Mahi. Roger Brogdon, the man behind Roof Tech on the right-hand side. But they're all big races, you know. This is this is not an easy deal here. So uh, we got Mahi the second round, and uh, if I can go up there and do my job, we should be fine. Uh, but you know, you don't race them on paper. I, you know, you never know what's going to happen. This, like what happened to me at the final uh, of the first race. So <laughs> let's see what happens. We're gonna, we're gonna just keep doing what we're doing. We're not gonna change a thing. So maybe the. I get a little bit luckier today than yesterday. That's what I'm hoping for. Just a little bit, not a whole bunch. I don't want to use it all up at once. Just, just a little bit. One sixteen sixty foot for Keith Mahi. That is a lot better. But Roger Brogdon's going to get down there and go around him in the light. Seven thirty five, one seventy two. Kayla Mazaris was supposed to be alongside of Clinton F. Clinton not able to make the call and the A.E. Cano dragster broke something. So Kayla gonna take that advanced automotive K altered automatic down about 800 feet. Shut her down and coast to an 817, 120 miles an hour. So, you know, we like to look back at our junior days and it, you can look at the track record of a lot of the kids who come out of juniors and, you know, we have people out here like Chris Dodd who's won multiple super comp championships, Hunter Patton who's out there winning nearly every big money bracket race, Corey Galletti, special shout outs to them of course and so many others, Justin Hutto's leading the world right now in, in super stock. So, yeah, I think the junior racing, it, it gives us an advantage. We've, we've been in this heat. We've done this for so long. Granted, I took a long time off, but, you know, it's kind of like riding a bike. So you get back in it, and you, you get back to learning how to get through adversity, especially in a really tough and nasty weather like it is right now. Hopefully it sticks what we've done. We uh, got down that pass. Uh, it was a lucky strike because uh, Linda broke. So uh, we'll just see uh, if we can uh, back it up now. Quarterfinal round in Roof Tech. Comp Eliminator, Kayla Mazaris and Rick Brown gonna lead us off. Kayla, the K-Altered Automatic, 32 Bantam, 250 cubic inch Ford power plant. Sitting in her lap, basically one half of a pro stock engine. She's gonna be spotting just about seven tenths of a second to Rick Brown, the B-Truck Automatic. Truck leaves hard, front end in the air. Kayla turns it red by two hunt. Rick is gonna go to the semis, coast to an 889 at 114. Brooke Heckle, David Triplett, you're next too. Brooke, out of Baytown, Texas. Side of the former Houston Raceway Park, the Sea Dragster Automatic, Ed Shane standing behind the car. Long time comp eliminator standout, driven some drag radial machines. Was the X275 world champ a couple years ago. Ran pro stock, now back in the comp eliminator arena for Triple H Structural Steel Covers of Texas. Broke a comp cash clash qualifier last year. David Triplett running for Treadwell Farms, the G Econo Dragster. Eight and a half tenths head start, going to David. Brooke is 20 red. 
David Triplett can just cruise to a semifinal appearance. He's going to bring up Taylor Chemiskey and Don Thomas. Taylor took a hit of 10 on his last lap. Don Thomas panhandle performance engines. The small block Cedar Axter automatic spotting over a second to the super mod car. Rolled off the assembly line as a front wheel drive, four cylinder powered economy car. Taylor turns it red by two tiny little thousandths of a second. Don Thomas, double O four, runs it down about a thousand feet and shuts her down 735, 139. Don Thomas and David Triplett are going to be one half of the semifinal round, and the other half is going to be Rick Brown and one of these two guys, Jason Grimma from Liberty Gears, another one of our bonus fund sponsors, and Roger Brogdon, the primary sponsor of the RoofTech Comp Eliminator Bonus Fund. RoofTech, your roofing contractor down from the Houston area. Had them come out and check my roof after the storms blew through the other day. Roger Brogdon, the B-Altered Planetary. Took a hit of three off of the index his last run. Jason Grimma is clean coming into this quarterfinal round and the small block Ford powered B altered. Grimma rattles the tires on the Mustang. Brogdon 20 on the tree and Brogdon's gonna go to the semis 52 under, 731, 175. Grimma goes 717 at 192. Man, I think we got some more. We got four or five left. Uh, now's the time to use it. So if we get an opportunity, we'll take it. We just got to get 135 degree racetrack and 120 water grains. I mean, it's 3,600 feet. It's it's pretty rough. So we'll keep trucking away. Hopefully, we can pick 60 foot up a couple, and we'll be in good shape. Well, as we all know, the luck is a big part of this game, at least 50 percent. And we've had it. I mean, we. I, I expected to see uh, Adam Hickey, which I wish I would have had that $1,000 in my pocket, but we didn't get it. Uh, uh, the boys from the West Coast got that, but we were able to take them out. They they blew the tires, and, you know, the track's getting a little hot and sticky or hot and messy, and, you know, people are spinning, and the faster cars are having a bigger problem, of course, and uh, our little truck just keeps, keeps going, wading through the field, and I'm thankful it's that way. Driving's been okay. I mean, we've been the O's and we've been the O40s, so I think we're okay with that. So just keep on trucking here and hopefully we'll come out on the other end. Roof Tech, Comp Eliminator semifinals, Rick Brown and Roger Brogdon. Roger Brogdon, the man behind Roof Tech, the primary sponsor of the bonus fund. Three quarters of a million dollars in prize money up for grabs. B Altered Planetary, your number one qualifier. He's taken five off of his index today. Rick Brown coming in with a hit of three so far. Just about a full second head start. Going to go to the truck, left-hand side for Don Redditch. John Stock. Final adjustments to the wheelie bars taking place for Roger. He altered with a planetary-style transmission, fixing to roll in. He's going to watch Rick move, and then he's going to have it exactly a quarter of a mile. Rick Brown turns it 23 red. Roger Brogdon's going to go to the final. So David Triplett, the GE Econo Dragster for Treadwell Farms over the right side. Don Thomas, C Dragster Automatic, left lane, Panhandle Performance Engines. Triplett, Treadwell Clan. You have not already. Eight point eight eight seconds. A head start going to the GE Econo machine. And David Triplett turns it 14 red. Don Thomas is going to the final. We did a lot of testing before we ever brought it out. And it uh, it's finally running like we thought it should. And, and it's pretty darn consistent. I'm, I'm happy with it right now considering all the efforts we went through to get it running, you know, like we have, and all, all the work they've done. But uh, the track's tricky out there right now. It's very hot. It's, uh, I think it's 127 degrees or something. So just trying to get a hold of it at all is, is a major, major struggle right this minute. So we're going to have to do something a little bit different from the final. Don Thomas is a very tough, very good racer, former champion. So we're going to give him all we can, I promise you. 
Yeah, I think we're close to him. I think it'll be a good race. I mean, we number one and two qualifier. That's pretty wild to go through all the qualifying strategies and then have number one and two in the final. That's pretty rare. But, yeah, I think we're real close. It's just going to be, I think it'll be a good race. So your final, final round of the weekend. Roof Tech, Comp Eliminator, Don Thomas and Roger Brogdon. Both these guys' opponents went red. So they did not have to take any additional index. Coming into the final round, Roger Brogdon, the man behind Roof Tech, the primary sponsor of the Roof Tech Comp Eliminator Bonus Fund. B altered with a planetary style transmission, right hand side out of Tomball. 445 cubic inch Chevrolet power plant. He was your number one qualifier. Don Thomas was number two. When all was said and done. The Amarillo, Texas based C Dragster Automatic 327 small blocks in behind his head for panhandle performance engines. Roger is going to move first by just about a quarter of a second. Don Thomas going to give chase and try to track him down at the finish line. One more Wally to hand out. We're about to find out, is it going to go west to Amarillo or is it going to go south to Tomball? grabs three hunt at the tree roger drifting over near the center line it's going to be don thomas seven flat with a one 191 miles an hour he had he was 13 up front roger brogdon 45 at the tree 726 7 at 189 not enough 200 of a second a margin of victory at the finish line and don thomas your roof tech comp eliminator champion here at texas motorplex in race number two yeah, thankfully, I, I, I kind of got honed in on the lights the last couple, three rounds. Got some nice breaks with the red lights that we've got. But yeah, that, that was a great final. I knew it was going to be. I mean, he was, we were within a couple hundredths of each other, it seemed like, all weekend. And, and pretty neat number one and two qualifier. And then to have a great race like that. No red lights, just a, just a great race. You know, in posing the question of, I'm going to start asking the winners, you know, can you win two of these in one season oh, man. that hasn't been done? I know. It, it, I, I don't know. It's just, you, the breaks are just going to have to go your way like they always do, but I, it's going to be tough. I mean, I, I don't know. I thought Hickey might have, but, I mean, Rick Brown, I mean, he's been in the semis at every race, and now Roger, two runner-ups in a row. It's it's tough, and I, I hope I can. I hope I'm the first one. Maybe win about three or four of them. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for staying with us here on the on the streams, on YouTube, on NHRA.TV. Thank you to everyone who came out here and joined us in person at Texas Motorplex. And of course, Roof Tech, on behalf of the National Hot Rod Association and Lucas Oil, the Division Four staff, the Texas Motorplex staff, Warren Evans, Joey Keith, Chase Huffman, and Jolie Stanfield, anybody else that shared the mic with me this weekend that I forgot, my name is Chris Monahan. We enjoyed it very much, and we hope you did the same, and we will see you next time.